We started down from the summit. We had planned to be down off the mountain and at our base camp that day. A storm came in within an hour of leaving the summit. Unfortunately, as night fell, we were still very high on the mountain, and we were forced to dig another snow cave and spend another night on the mountainside. Now, we had not planned for this. Now, the way you dive, climb something like this, you've got your two ice axes, you've got a cliff behind you, you kneel down, you whack your ice axes in and lower yourself off the edge of the cliff till you're hanging on your two axes, and then you kick the front points, the two front points of your crampons, into the ice, so you're standing on a couple of inches of steel. Then what you do, you'd release one axe, slam it in the ice, Release another one, slam it in, straighten your arms, kick your feet. Fairly straightforward, really. <laughs> it isn't, actually. It's very difficult down climbing. It's completely the opposite of a natural way of climbing. But the other thing about ice climbing is that ice is a very fickle medium. It just sounded weird. And I was very conscious that Simon was moving towards me, so I thought I want every axe placement to be bomb-proof. So I took the axe out again, and I was about to swing to make another placement. And there was a loud crack, and all the ice around my top axe did what we call dinner plated. A great sheet of it just cracked off and it whipped out. It happened to happen at that exact moment when my other tool wasn't in the ice. But it spanned me and I was falling instantly. After 50 feet, I'd stopped. I was lying on my back, face down, uh, on my back, head down the slope, looking up the slope with my good leg, my left leg tangled in the rope. I say my good leg because almost the instant I stopped, I had the most ex excruciating agony coming from my knee. Almost unbearable. By the time I'd established my leg was broken, the rope went slack. It meant that Simon was coming towards me. And it took about 15 minutes for him to get close to me. And in that moment, it was the closest on a mountain I've ever come to panicking and losing it completely. I couldn't think any plan out of this situation. I knew I was going to die. I knew that Simon was going to have to leave me for, to die. And I was close to tears. And then suddenly he was at the top of the cliff looking down at me. And he said, are you OK? And it actually occurred to me to say yes. <laughs> we will lie in some extraordinary circumstances. And um, I just thought, no, be calm, Joe. And I said, no, I've broken my leg. And he just kept staring at me. He said nothing. He just kept staring at me. And that frightened me more than anything. And then he turned away. He had to try and get down to me. And to do that, I had to untie from my double ropes, and he had to use the ropes and hammer in a snow stake and basically arrange what's called an abseil, which is to slide down the rope in a controlled way. And the, the silence he had in, re, in the reaction to the news of my, my, uh, my broken leg was what was frightening me. And I only realized much, much later, actually, we never taught any protocol by which you're going to tell your friend that you're going to leave him to die. And I knew he had to go. I didn't blame him. And why should he die for me, basically? And I thought, well, I'll just put my head down, and Simon will climb below me, and then he'll climb off to the right. And he'll go. We don't need to speak about it. And I'll play out my end game. You know. And after a while, I looked to my right, and about 10 feet away, there was Simon. He was using his other axe, and he was chopping a ledge with his ice axe along the slope, about 10 inches wide, to make it easier for me to hop along. And I was thinking, he's not leaving me. I don't know what his plan is, but I'm going with it. And Simon lowered me hour after hour after hour in the teeth of a storm, in a wind chill of about minus 50, this is an overhanging ice cliff, sticking out. That's the mountain slope. It's sticking out from the mountainside like that. At the base of it is a crevasse, by which I mean a great crevice in the, in the glacier of the mountain, in the slope below. And Simon lowered me straight off the edge of it. We had no idea it was there. My sudden complete weight hitting the rope would have just ripped him off if he'd held the rope. So he just let the rope go. And then slowly, dynamically braked it. It meant, though, when I came to a stop, I was about 20, 30 feet, 10 meters, whatever, down, hanging in free air off the edge of this overhanging cliff, spinning. And in desperation to get my weight off the rope, he just started lowering me as fast as he could. And after about another 30 feet, I came to a stop. And uh, I knew exactly what had happened. The knot joining the two ropes had just come up and up and up and just jammed in this friction device. There was no way. We were locked in the system. There's no way I could get out of it. After about an hour and a half, I started free-falling. <laughs>